Hello folks and welcome to Air North Chronicles. In the previous episode uh, we uh, covered uh, a bit of the generic uh, tutorial uh, things for beginners. The second one was a bit about uh, a generic discussion about uh, builds and so on. So today we will have a more detailed look on how to approach a build by building an iconic character and uh, also uh, we will be having a, a more in-depth look in various game mechanics that you should know like synergy and multicast and so on so let's uh, start and uh, we will be leaving the organization in the background starting it empty for now and uh, let's go and uh, make a dumpier character so, one of your parents was a vampire, you inherited parts of their strength, their blood addiction and uh, while most dumpers are happy to live serving normal human lives, others pursue transcendence to full vampirism. We won't, we would be hunting our kind, we would be hunting vampires, but we'll still be suffering from the vampiric hunger. And uh, one question that one might have is uh, why on earth would I play Dumpy? There is a vampire in the game, right? Uh, it's an RPG. Uh, vampires are much stronger. Yes, they are. I want to play Dumpy. I don't want to play a vampire with this character. And yes, my Dumpy will be weaker. <laughs> so what? Okay. Uh, so we have Hunger, Lark and Shadows, Anticipation, Lesser Compulsion to our decks. It's these cards. Negotiate because we are human and uh, we also count as a wicked despite our intentions. Wicked doesn't mean that we are evil, it means that uh, things that are holy affect us negatively, like blessed, for example, or uh, auras of light and darkness. Uh, we'll be starting at Inford, we can learn stealth actions. We are also a human, meaning that we have. A minimum deck of 20 cards, access to intuition, leadership, and diplomacy, slashing, piercing, platonic affinity, and so on. And uh, as a damper, we get an additional plus one here, so that's a plus two for our slashing downs. Uh, now we are a human, we are a damper, and uh, we will be making a hunter. And I will be picking a Vampire Hunter, because that's what we will be. And uh, picking a Vampire Hunter gives us uh, Religion Actions, gives us these two extra cards, uh, Vampire Lore, that is only useful when you are fighting Vampires, not always. And uh, Respite, which is a nice healing card. Also our religion actions, that is, actions that belong to the religion school, get uh, this effect every three ranks, which is an effect that gives increased vulnerability and it's much harder to resist than vulnerable uh, to enemies. And it's something that hunting or religion cards usually have. Anyway, so we are a vampire hunter. And as a hunter, we have access to markmanship, hunting alchemy. We also get extra bonus in our slashing damage. And uh, these are our cards. We can also potentially have a pet as a companion, but we won't. Now, I'm playing with uh, the Heroes and Villains uh, workshop uh, mode active. This is a canon mode. This is vanilla content created by me. And that's extra specializations in the game like the wilderness guide the ranger and uh, about 32 uh, in total which uh, would be overwhelming to have in the base game but once you are more experienced go to the workshop and grab it because uh, these options uh, will open uh, new avenues for your characters uh, so for background i will be getting uh, um, maybe the Vigilante, but uh, we do need the Silver Sword, so I will take instead the Gallant Hero. And whenever we defeat a Wicked Enemy, we will be drawing a card. 
and uh, this will be our uh, uh, weapon which is not a katana exactly but it's still silver and uh, finally to make this uh, match we will be picking the ember dawn which is a bounty hunter skill specialized in tracking fighting and neutralizing all sort of supernatural creatures monsters and curses so our character is uh, ready let's quickly preview a bit the cards here we will having uh, combat hunting and also we got some esotericism cards that we will be finding along the way and the other thing is that our summon limit will uh, be penalized so we'll be planning to play solo okay so let's have a look in our starting cards we have our vampire cards which give synergies and uh, the hunter's brew gives synergies and we'll be adding these to other cards and the other cards will be dealing actually the damage like our longsword or skirmish or whatever You can click on card and uh, read what uh, they do in detail, like for example, what Mark does. So, Mark enemies receive two extra damage for every Mark counter they have, and it stacks with vulnerable. Now, non immune enemies have 0% chance to resist this effect, plus 3% per Mark counter they already have. Uh, immune enemies, there is not really immune enemies, but highly resistant. Uh, these guys have 85% chance to resist mark if they are high resistant to mark anyway we'll be seeing all that as we play for now let's focus on uh, what to increase hmm. let's go and check a bit our perks so we have markman's perks and uh, markmanship will be boosting our markmanship actions so not having access to markmanship will not be a very good idea we also have access to a few religion and uh, all our actions will have uh, blessed benefits and so on we have access to some alchemy and uh, we don't have much access to combat actions exactly uh, but uh, thankfully our organization will uh, make up for that and will give us bonuses in combat and as well as to other actions too so combat uh, is one of our uh, top uh, uh, skills that we will be having Esotericism and religion, we will keep them. Diplomacy, not. We will forsake it. Leadership, we will forsake it. And as of the new update, you can forsake up to four skills. So I can also go and forsake other skills if I want. But uh, having skills at zero is okay. It won't hurt you uh, in particular. With the new update, as they won't be part of the area rewards so you can leave them at zero and you can only find them in town or in grimoires uh, or you can forsake too but i will keep them just uh, to have options down the road so uh, combat is one of my skill i want to have a secondary skill and that secondary skill will either be markmanship or it will be hunting and i think i will go with hunting for now now intellect we want uh, since we already pick a, a background that doesn't give boosting hand size for example if I had this memories from a past life I could get away with having lower intellect because now my hand size would be 5 and 5 is the hand size you want to go for either with a background or with an intellect uh, and since uh, our background will be gallant hero we'll be going for the intellect boost and that is an intellect of 14 
now if you can go to 14 you will notice hand size is 5 so 11 plus 3 equals 14 we want uh, our willpower to be at least 10 so we will add two points more here and to get a bonus we need it to be at least 11 so when we get into the game we want to have at least willpower of 11 and uh, we can also now focus on the stuff that we care about and that is uh, strength and agility which will improve our slashing and piercing damage so let's go and have it at uh, 13 too which will be a good point to put further points on okay uh, maybe we can uh, go at 10 resilience we still have a plus 2 blazonic and uh, now we have a proper plus 5 slashing and maybe keep our agility at 14 and go like this to also have a better platonic damage ok um, I think we are good let's uh, take our character and I would like someone with a sword Maybe this guy right here. And I will call him Jake. Okay, so this character that we just made, uh, we will be starting out in Conquest. If you find Conquest to be too hard, go to Exploration until you learn the game, otherwise uh, this is a very easy mode to learn the game to without worrying too much Okay, so uh, We are in Inford now if you go here you will see the various uh, Shortcuts and that click and hold mouse will pan the map Shift one two three four or this little button here will uh, make the zoom to a more comfortable level I will play with three and uh, this button here will focus back on your character when you are in an area that you can explore you will always see this press M to explore options so M will open and M will close the exploration options if there is a caravan you can use it to travel by paying uh, farthings to a town that have this little caravan icon so I could go to Glenfield I could go to Lucina and so on without traveling and to travel you right click in any spot of the map and your character will move towards there and if it's uh, the sea it will uh, take a sip which uh, assumes that you are working on and don't pay anything okay uh, so first thing let's go to our character sheet we have a slashing of 5 piercing of 4 let's go and check out our perks we can uh, get our first perk now and uh, the ember recruit increases the damage of our combat actions that already do damage or get damage through a synergy later on uh, all our actions get vulnerable plus two if they already have vulnerable and if they get vulnerable down the road so i will get this perk uh, spirits and demon enemies are weak to banish could also be useful down the road but nothing to concern us much at this point so in the previous um, tutorial I saw you that you can change your name, that you can change your portrait, that you can click this to get a reminder of what your race was all about. These buttons, you can also click these buttons here to check out the various uh, skills you have, what cards 
they will give you and that which uh, rank and I can also hover to see if I have any specific benefits tied to this skill for example here I can see that combat has a damage plus 2 and only combat and only if the card already deals damage or gets damage and uh, also that the increase cost is one level up point and the requirements is level 3 I can't increase combat before level 3 I could increase stealth now if I had a level up point though. I also don't have any perk points you can search your perks if you want for example if I wanted to find ways to optimize my combat I could search for combat and see all the perks that I can get uh, that uh, give me bonus to combat but some have requirements for example this one requires you to have already the Ember Hunter perk and be level 12 and also costs 300 perk points so all these three requirements must met in order for you to get this little elite Ember Hunter perk okay Equipment are silver uh, longsword and silver quadruples are damage but only if the target is weak to silver. Okay, let's go to our deck builder. So we have 20 cards in our deck, some of them are uh, synergies. We have smoke out that it's a multicast card. And uh, I want to have two of them so you can see better how multicast and synergies work. And uh, we also use our ally to get a bit of a glimpse in uh, an ally uh, sort of gameplay. But uh, we won't have this in because it's a bit of a sideboard card. I won't have this in because it's a bit of a conditional card. And. Uh, since I want to focus more on showing you about synergies, I will also add two of these. And uh, we are above the required minimum, it's okay, they are all cards, they can all do what we want them to do. So I will save this deck here and call it uh, starting deck. And this will be my starting deck. And because it has the same name as this one, it overrides it. And uh, now I will close this. Uh, go add this in, for example. And uh, also... Let's say, remove two cards. Doesn't matter. We can remove, for example, feeding. And uh, save this deck as Vampire Hunt. So when we are hunting vampires, we can't feed on them uh, because they are undead, but we can benefit from having the blessed, or if they are undead, generally. Uh, but this card needs to target vampires, so this uh, deck is only good against vampires. Assuming we meet some down the road and want to switch deck but you can have multiple decks and now that you have multiple decks you can easily switch between them and I will show you how in a blink okay so uh, here we can see the areas you can notice these icons represent the aversions and the affinities and uh, if an element have a version you deal less damage with this element your allies come weaker they might come dead upon arrival and if you have affinity these cards are uh, much uh, stronger you can preview the rewards that you can get and uh, once you are ready you can click explore now if you don't like the area you are in you can just right click and go elsewhere I uh, can't do much in Baros Bay, here it would. I could go, but things wouldn't improve much for me. In a race, I could even go and do a challenge. Yes, you can. Okay, another shortcut that you may want to 
to know is T which will open the town and if you want to purchase some stuff in the town and they may help you uh, down the road so what I like to buy is uh, some stuff that can get me back in the game like cards that restore action points cards like the portable bedroll that also heal and restore action points and maybe some uh, cards that are good against particular enemies like uh, the fairy dust for example if we could afford it and so on uh, I will also buy the phoenix feather these are all cheap cards you can refresh the stores once more and this will advance time and the stores will close at 7 so keep that in mind we can buy some holy water maybe a dust bomb you can buy some uh, cheap equipment if you like like the enforcer's cloak is a good choice you get a healer regeneration per turn for one action point uh, upkeep which is great or the potion belt to help you fetch supplies Hunter's Vest, good defensive card, leather armor let's do that once more Ring of Wording Order of the Moon Clock Saint Talisman is particularly good and fits our character a bit more so we have a silver silver uh, long sword and if we go to view our inventory uh, you will notice that it's a one-handed weapon so it takes our primary weapon slot and uh, maybe we can just find some uh, offhand weapon that we can use maybe a silver dagger why not or a silver sword even better this symbol here is offhand, so this weapon we can equip to our offhand, but we can't afford it. We can't afford it, and uh, maybe we can sell something. We can sell cards that are not in our deck. For example, I can sell negotiate and uh, go back here. Now the time advances, and I might not have time to find everything that I need. To help me prepare but it's worth the try also the stores uh, refresh it's time you click this button so you may not find the weapon you wanted I found a short sword but it's not a silver one Silver dagger is too expensive. I will just buy the short sword. It's okay. So I equipped that too, and now I, I'm dual healing a silver long sword and a short sword, and I'm ready to uh, start my adventure. So we have all these nodes up here, and uh, when we finish this area, we will return back. To the world map and we can take another adventure and gather cards and take another adventure and this is the game loop you are fighting battles you are building your character you are building your deck and um, by building your character I mean this card here has a vulnerable 4 only because we have this perk right here which gives all our actions that have vulnerable, a vulnerable of plus 2 so if you don't have this perk, this card will just deal vulnerable to not four. And uh, since it's combat, it deals extra damage because we have exactly because we have this perk that deals extra damage. So a card might be useless for you because your character doesn't have the perks to make it good enough. A card can be super overpowered exactly because your character 
has this perk that makes it good enough. Okay. So start of our turn. Now we will be learning to use uh, synergies. So we have skirmish that gives uh, synergy damage of plus two. Let's play that. It also deals some damage to the first enemy. Now I can add this synergy here. That's a base damage of 2. So the card, a hunting card, will get 2. And because it's piercing, will get my piercing affinity, which, if you remember, was 4. So 2 plus 4, 6. That's why we deal 3 to 6 damage. Hmm. Okay, what about this card? 1 to 2 dark damage this time. Why? Because our dark sucks pretty much. That doesn't make laser compulsion a bad card. That makes us a bad character to use laser compulsion. Um, but what if I add it here? Just a plus two increase because this card already deals damage. Just a plus two increase because this card already deals damage and have everything that is entitled to have. It have it has our combat bonus, it has our uh, slashing affinity, it has everything there is to have. Uh, this card ignores synergy, so let's craft Feeding. Feeding is a piercing card that gives us Blood Surge, which is a resource. We can use it to pay cards that cost Blood Surge. I don't think we have any. If we do, we could pay it. Uh, gives bleed, drain 6, it will harm a non undead target and restore. Uh, so it will deal 6 damage of the same element, piercing in this case, and also restore 6 health to our character. And uh, if the enemy dies, uh, we'll get to draw a card. Now, this can deal up to 12 damage. The enemy will survive in any case. Uh, but uh, what's most important is that it's a reaction. And after you play any card, you discard all reaction cards still in your hand. That's the third tooltip you can read there. So now that I got feeding, I have to play it. If I play anything else, I would lose it. So it was a bad move taking it at this point. I could have uh, first, for example, give him vulnerable. Anyway, now he will die from the bleeding effect. And that's the skull indication next to his health. And uh, this enemy is dealt with, so we can move him in the back. Now let's... Um, let's play Lesser Compulsion. It has a stun, it will deal some damage, it's intense, it will bypass the enemy resistances. So even if this enemy could resist the dark, uh, he will still take this 3 intense damage. And we'll also apply him some vulnerable stacks. We'll also stun him, which is, which is good, because now he won't be able to act. And finally we have this little guy here. And he happens to be weak to silver, because he's a monster. And uh, our weapon can deal 19 to 39 damage to this type of enemy. And so he's gone. You can rearrange the enemies like this if you want. This card is fire, so it's penalized in this area we are in, but it can still multicast and we'll see how we can turn that into an advantage. So we have a silver ward, we can just uh, kill him with it. And uh, delaying is not a good idea because reinforcements might come and they may overwhelm you. Uh, let's grab the strong books to our stars. We can sell it later on. So, single combat. 
dual and flank. We don't have any allies to protect us, so he will give us uh, vulnerable and then will also attack. Having uh, this guy at uh, the front is not such a problem because he will also flank and deal damage and then vulnerable. And our character will break. So these guys will just attack. But if we had uh, other flankers, we may want to rearrange enemies. And in this case, we don't want him to do that. We don't want him to use his ability. So our first um, attempt is to see if we can kill him. Yes, a 26 can kill him and we can uh, risk that. For the other guys we will be using Mark. So now this guy can suffer 4 more damage. And our next card also has Mark. So an additional 4, and an additional 4, an additional 8, uh, so that's 16 to 21 damage, and the enemy will probably survive. So we'll give him Mark, and now use a 18 to 24 damage and the damage over 22 can potentially kill him which is a much better prospect finally I will stun this guy and pass let's get synergy damage we can add it here and that's a lot of damage it's potentially double but the double chance is 25% so wouldn't hold a candle on dealing 114 damage but it would be possible okay so smoke out we won't particularly need we can't discard cards with unravel so we are forced to keep hunger and I will just keep the rest as well. So this is an event, we can uh, choose how you will approach it. We can search for valuables, look for tracks, follow them if you have action points, because if you do, you might run into encounters and without action points, you may have a problem. He's also weak to silver. Let's also use our feeding. He's a vampire. Hmm. Now at this point if he was a grave threat we could just switch deck but it's not our sideboard deck isn't much of a sideboard at this point. So it's not really worth it. and some valuable cards and if you hover here you will notice which is the most valuable and because they are commodities their price will change depending on where you are and if they are exports or imports and so on but uh, in any case I will just pick these first two more goblins and uh, now we will um, we'll play Lurk in Shadows. This will give us a sneak attack and damage, but we don't have concealment, so without concealment we can't deal sneak attack. Sneak attack is also a damage multiplier. I will just leave it to unravel once, so it would give us concealment and use it on my next turn. Uh, let's uh, use our sword to take down one of these single combat candidates. 
Clairvoyance, remove the top two cards from your draw pile, choose and draw one, then discard the rest. Another Lark in Shadows and a Camouflage. Let's go with Camouflage. Add that damage here. We'll also get Synergy Mark. Now we will add this damage, this mark here, and get Synergy Damage and also Clairvoyance. Now we have only 3 action points, so we can play this to kill one more. Or at least put him into a defensive ability. And also weaken them with multicast. Multicast affects the first 2 targets, which will make them deal much less damage. Now, if I was in a real danger, I could also fetch items from my backpack and I will show you how to do that uh, in a bit. So, uh, this guy is shielded, meaning he will resist 6 damage and the best way to kill a shielded enemy is by giving them bleed. But uh, in this case it was also enough to kill him. Now we have concealment, so let's sneak attack. changed his ability to concealment which uh, will give him a chance to avoid damage and also deal double damage and uh, let's say now that I am in a threat I'm not, but let's say I am and maybe something here can help me maybe this portable bedroll but I need to have at least one action point to draw it and now that I did I need to have the action points to play it Luckily I do. So I can uh, now kill this one. Like so. I can get... Unfortunately, we don't have a source to deal damage to him. But maybe we can draw one, right? Anyway, not enough action points to do anything. So he will uh, get concealment and now as you see my action points refreshed at 6 per turn because that's what my character can do. And not back to full, so the more you are overburning, the more you are going and spending more than the action points you regenerate, the more you might find yourself in a spot where you don't have uh, enough action points. Okay, let's summon our pet. So our wolf is a unique companion. It will take up some of our concentration, this attribute here. This means that uh, after we play 8 actions, we start accumulating fatigue. And each point of fatigue we accumulate will increase for this the remainder of the turn the action point costs of my cards. So this running out to a 2 or 3 fatigue, it's not much of a problem later on, but it will be now, so we need to keep our actions as uh, you know, close to our concentration as possible. So now that we have this uh, companion, this happens to be a unique uh, ally, so he won't run out of lifespans others might do and when they do they will leave play and you can summon them again and uh, once you summon an ally they break any connection to their card they are characters they can uh, individually gain xp they can level up they can grow in power and health and so on so this makes him protected meaning that uh, if i run out of summon limit i only have one slot if i try to summon anything else uh, it will uh, just go to, to my discard pile automatically and my wolf could uh, be left alone but if this uh, was unlocked I could click to unprotect it like so if it was unprotected then my wolf would get replaced 
by whatever I was to summon because I don't have summon slots. This is ally info will show me the ally card. This will uh, play his card automatically to the first enemy and this will just attack and they will exchange damage. So he will deal 3 to 6, he will deal 4 to 8 and they will happily part ways. So let's use his quick special which uh, used uh, the track to Goblin Skirmisher, it's an effortless, gives mark, dispels concealment. So now he no longer can avoid our damage. If he had cover, it would have dispel it and uh, so on and so forth. And all that doesn't matter because I die. But in any other instance, level up. So we got a tome, it gave us some perk points, it gave us some XP, that's cool. We gained a level and our Vampire Hunter can uh, now increase one of their skills. We can't increase combat, but uh, we can now bring our hunting to two. And this means that now we can find and use better hunting. And uh, you can't uh, increase 16 to 17, you need two level up points after that point. But uh, you can increase 14 to 15, for example. You can see if it will have any effect. It may not have right away, but down the road, for instance, Charisma will improve our uh, merchant prices with its rank above 10. Anyway, uh, let's go and check our Ember Dawn perks and we have Garam which uh, gives Mark, Silver and Plagionic damage. It's a contact, it's just a card but certain ally effects can also fetch him and it costs zero. It's also a Fortless because he's a contact so Fortless cards won't con uh, consume concentration. So you can pick now at this point either the Hunter Strix or the Camel's Strength and each one of them will also give you an extra skill, either Hunting or Angelic Runes. So we can get this Hunter Strix right here which gives a lot of mark and bleed and can morph up to level 10 to become a quite amazing card. Uh, or we can get Camel Strength, which amplifies slashing, can morph up to level 10, and equally become a great card. And I think I will go with. Notice also that you're going to decrease the enemy resistance to bleed. So if an enemy has 85% chance to resist bleed because he's a skeleton. Uh, with this perk, you will drop it to 60%, and with more perks, more. It will also let you stack more bleed, because its bleed you stack will be increasing the enemy's resistance, and give you a bonus in mark, while this will do that for burn. And burn is more powerful than uh, bleed, generally speaking. One burn stack deals 5 damage, one bleed stack deals 1 damage, uh, but also comes at lower values, burn, in comparison to bleed. Anyway, uh, I think I will go with Camel's strength for this character, which gives us angelic runes as well. And I can go ahead and add this card to my deck. Orcs are also weak to silver, so we can take out this one. Let's use our quick special. 
he is now more uh, prone to damage, he will suffer 6. Wunalab won't be resisted, so let's, uh, let's do skirmish, sword sword. And now stun here. Stun has 25% chance to be resisted right out of the bat, but um, if the enemy is not resistant to, to stun, then pretty much you will stun him. 25% is not much. Okay, let's uh, stake the vampire, of course. That will be what we can do and leave we are passing from a small village it's night closed the black mist is closed we could rest if we wanted we could buy rations if we wanted and we don't so let's complete the area and we can get our reward cloak of the woods would be nice uh, to use because it will give us uh, concealment and also a silver dagger it's what would be very nice to have even though this one is a piercing instead of a slashing sneak attack and silver can deal a lot of damage together so returning to the world and now we can uh, go and improve our character with the stuff that we got Let's use silver longsword and silver dagger. That's the combination I want. We also never equipped our sun talisman. But we purchased in the town and our cloak of the woods are all now equipped. You can preview them here if you want. And you can also manage your equipment directly from your deck builder as well. So one last thing I will show you before uh, I leave you is uh, how to travel. So let's right click and let's say that now we want to reach Hirdwood. And uh, your feet should be touching the area you want. It will tell you that you are in Hirdwood, press M to explore and you know that you are in Hirdwood. And if you are using a, a mod that changes this to circular tokens, then the circular tokens should be placed here. Otherwise the mod is incorrect, the circular tokens are placed here and you will be having a lot of trouble to uh, land in the correct spot. Anyway, um, I'm just saying because some people were saying that uh, they have difficulty tracking the correct spot and that's because if you use a mod the mod needs to have uh, a rectangular sprite and uh, the token to be at the feet instead of a square one which will land it in the avatar's middle part okay so we are now in Hirdwood the town is locked and will unlock as we gain more influence so doing quest will gain us more influence and eventually uh, increase the town level and the higher town tier will sell higher uh, expertise and uh, higher uh, tier cards so you want to accumulate influence eventually but anyway uh, what I want to show you is uh, no it doesn't matter let's go on the here dude caverns. What I want to show you is uh, the deck switcher. So now that you have uh, multiple decks you can switch them by clicking on it and now we switch to our vampire uh, hand deck while we could just switch back to our starting deck and so on. You could update your current deck by typing the same name here and saving it. You can save your equipment loadout and a different equipment loadout and uh, quickly change between these two sets by loading it and uh, so on. 
This will draw you, show you the remaining cards that you have in your draw pile. And uh, finally, there are some options here that um, you may find useful. For example, if you are uh, tired, you may be able to rest by setting up a camp. And to set a camp, you need to have wood. So let's say that we have wood. And uh, your character happens to be tired, which is great. And now I can set up a camp here. And setting a camp will let me rest and restore hit points and action points. Of course, I don't need that now. But uh, perhaps I can... Uh, I can just rest for four hours and continue. This is terrible. And so on. So goblins are silver world. Uh, sword will come to the rescue. Let's make sure they don't have concealment. I used the long, long sword. And I will just get the log trap, which will make us lose both uh, hit points and action points. And uh, if all I had was the six I regenerate, then log trap would have been a large problem for my character. But I also have my campfire, and I can uh, just use it after. So use my campfire. Uh, break his concealment, kill him with silver. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope there was uh, some th new things that uh, you weren't aware. Uh, I won't be playing with this character, but uh, we will be uh, talking more about multicast and echo actions with a different character down the road. I hope you. Uh, understood a bit better of how you use uh, synergies and I will be seeing you next time. Have a good night.